Hmm, who could it be? Hurry up, hurry up and let me in! Hoopachan! Ah, at this rate, my life is going to be much shorter. I managed to get here without being found. You're safe. I was worried. Whoa! I didn't think those two would be a match for him. What happened to, to Purep and Huaisusan? Tell me, what happened outside? The two of them raided the castle with their men. It was going well at the beginning. They managed to break down the first gate. Then the next gate opened on its own, and they were lured in. They thought the castle had surrounded, surrendered so easily, but well, they were wrong. When they set foot in the depths of the castle, Masherichik came out himself and counterattacked. Some of the Kamui were killed. Are those two safe? Yeah, they said they'd regroup and escaped. Masherichik can't come after them outside the castle. He can't leave the castle. Indeed, because of that giant body of his. Then why are the gods around here afraid of him? If he can't get out of the castle, then there's no need to fear him. Because there are others who follow and worship him. Shimpuk and various other gods. They're a major force around here. They come to crush anyone who opposes them. And if we don't oppose them, nothing will happen. The problem isn't just the people around us. Even if they didn't leave the castle, the demon god's power when he has a rampage is enough to destroy the surrounding mountains and seas. That's why humans don't get close. That can't be. What should I do? Is there anything I can do? He does. You know what? I'm sorry. He's an old country pumpkin. <laughs> I can't keep my voices straight anymore. Sorry. I don't know if it'll be of any use, but I've collected some secret artifacts from my friends. I won't get in on unless I help you. Besides, I was hoping someone would end his tearing. First of all, this beer. It can transform you into another creature. Just once. Only once. If it's just once, doesn't that mean if I transform into a little bird like you and escape from the castle, I can't become human again? Oh, hold on, the sound is like way low. For you guys, there we go. Up a little bit. <laughs> if you die and be reborn, you can go back to being human again. Actually, Country Bumpkin for Upachan is probably fine because isn't Hokkaido like way in the country? So they have like probably a country version of the Japanese dialect and the uh, voice. <laughs> probably. Uh. That means I'd have to start everything over again with a new life. Second is the wooden doll. A body substitute. Oh, now it's too high? Alright, fine. I'll change it for you guys there. Is that better? Okay. Oops. It's pretty small. How useful is it? When the gods use it, they can make dolls that look just like themselves to the point where other gods will be tricked. At least that might be useful as a decoy. Well, I'm weak, but, uh, so I can't use it. <laughs> Thank you, Upachan. I appreciate the effort you put in for me. I guess that's all I can ask of you. What? What do you mean, wait? Do I need to turn it up? Hey, you were thinking these artifacts are useless just now, weren't you? Wait, what, what do you mean, what was his answer? Oh, man. Uh. His answer to what? Oh, hold on. Let's see. Uh. That means I'd have to start everything over again with a new life. Okay, he didn't have an answer. She That was her just thinking. See, that means I have to start everything. So, he never did answer her. Yeah, so she die, come back as a new human. Yeah. Just you wait. I'll bring you something better. Hurrah! Oh, Rizlin, today's meal for Master is not sealed.
when it's time to eat, I realize what he means. Kashimpuk tells me to carry a lavish plate of food. The salmon rolls shine like jewels. I'll get yelled at if I eat anything. In fact, in the worst case scenario, I'll be eaten. Let's not do that. When I take the tray to his room, I find the Shiratrik in human form. He is eating no differently than a normal human. On days when it's he's in a good mood, he becomes who he really is. The Shimpuk gently whispers under his breath. I'm surprised he can even take human form. As I casually mutter that, the oppressive face of the Shimpuk draws near. Don't mention his human form in front of him. Humans are created later than gods. It's like seeing a celebrity and saying they look like an impersonator. Uh, I'll be careful. Should I call it a god form? For dessert after dinner, take this Haskap fruit. Wow, fruit? I've always wanted to eat this. Of course, it's not for you. It's for Lord Mushirachik. <sighs> but I don't mind if you take a few. Thanks, Kachimpuk. Oh, Lord Mushirachik, you look even better today. Is it because you unleashed your full power yesterday? Yeah. He plucks a haskup fruit from the plate resting on Kashipuk's hand, puts it in his mouth, and walks away. It's been four days since I was kidnapped. My doubts about Masherichik continue to grow. Why can't he leave the castle? He said it was it's because of his large body, but it doesn't look like he was born with that body. On top of that, why did the servants worship him when he treats them so badly? I don't think we're just run away. Running away takes priority at this point. All right, we're getting out of here. There's no point thinking about it all now. First, I need to figure out a way to get out of here alive. Hey, welcome back. Did you bring me something again? The elder of my village gave me this. Heard someone left it in the woods a long time ago. Sword. It was stained with dirt, but the hilt and scabbard are carved beautifully. I unsheathed the blade. Huh? It's not made of metal. Is it a wooden sword? Yes, it is. It is not a sword to cut humans, but I hear it can slay gods and demons. Really? I swing the sword as a test. There's nothing strange about it. Anyway, thank you. Hey, you don't believe me, do you? Well, it is just a rumor, and I've never seen anyone use it. Lupachan opens the door a little to get out of the room. At that moment, the door suddenly slams open. I quickly hide the sword under my pillow. Are you the foolish little bird sneaking in and out of the castle? Ah! Lupachan flies off to escape, but Kashimpuk grabs him with his one hand. You annoying little god. I left you alone because you're harmless, but it's irritating when you're flying around like an insect. I don't have enough meat on you for my master, so I'll have it instead. Let go of me! How should I eat you? Raw or grilled? Kishimpuk opens his mouth wide and pops Upa into it unceremoniously. Wait, Kishimpuk! He's my servant! A servant? I'm the master of the castle's fiancé, you know. It's strange that I don't have a servant, so I have him to take care of me. <laughs> Spit him out, dang it. Spit him out. <laughs> As our lord has granted me permission to act on his behalf, I will allow you to have this servant. I breathe a sigh of relief as Upa is released. Who's the servant, damn it? Shh. As long as you are not eating, it's fine, right? I managed to avoid Upachan being eaten, but the chimneys that allowed him to come and go freely were eventually blocked by a net. I can't co contact the outside anymore. Why don't you investigate that demon god's true identity, Brislinchan? True identity of the demon god? His true form! I have heard that those who turn into some something lose their power when their true form is exposed. But 
but isn't that human form, human-like form, his true form? That's what he looked like when we were in Camus Lucier. Well, that's a true form too, but you know, when we gods come to the human world, we have some kind of physical forms, right? Animals, plants, fire, water, tools. There's a lot of them, but they're supposed to be familiar to humans. Oh, you're right. Just like you, Upachan. But there's no way a giant limbless monster like that could exist in this world. So his true form has to be something else. You see, so wouldn't wouldn't the form of a god wouldn't he be the form of a god or demon creature, but a form that exists in the human world? Exactly. Hmm. That night Mashirachik calls me to his room again. Rizlin. Mashirachik grabs me and carries me over to the bed again. I immediately stiffen up, but unlike yesterday, he places me on his lap and sighs quietly. Don't be alarmed. I won't force you like I did last night. First of all, becoming husband and wife isn't something you should force somebody to do. The atmosphere is completely different from yesterday. It looks calm today. It is true that I want you to live comfortably here, though. I told you before, I'll give you anything but the sky and the ocean. What do you want? I don't want anything in particular. Rather, I want him to free me from this place. When I'm in the form of a demon god, I can't contain my anger. I can't restrain my violence. I lose myself. That makes me even more angry with myself. Lord Mashirichik, what makes you so angry? You seem really upset about something. I'll never be able to see the sky again. I used to ride the wind and fly over a chain of islands. But I'll never feel the wind again. So you weren't like this in the past. Shirachik closed his eyes in affirmation. Mother Kluchevskaya. Blech. Kluchevskaya. There we go. Mother Kluchevskaya, how are you doing now? This prison is too small. There's a hint of sadness in his murmur. If only they hadn't made a fool of me. You can feel Mashirachik's body starting to fill with rage. So that person is the reason again. What happened with... Get away from me for now. Just thinking about it makes me unable to control my impulses. As Machiratrick transforms back into his black monster, monster form, I hurry out of the room. The moment I close the door, the ground shakes violently. If I had stayed there, I would have gotten caught up in it. For some reason, the roar of the demon god echoing throughout the castle sad, sad, sounds sad tonight. No, the blob is not his true form. No, it's a pile of feathers. <laughs> it's a big blob covered in feathers with one eye. After observing for a while, I finally figured out how they get food into the castle. It seems there's a group of servants that goes hunting from midnight to dawn every day. By the way, the fox we hunted yesterday had some whitish-looking stuff mixed in. Can you eat that? Really? It's a mutant or something. I bet it tastes the same, though. Hmm, it doesn't look tasty. Then don't give it to the master. We'll eat it ourselves. What are you hunting tonight? Uh, we're out of sea otter, so we'll go get some of that. The group that goes hunting pushes a large cart loaded with empty boxes to, car to carry a lot of prey. If I hide in one of those empty boxes, I might be able to get outside. Oh, somebody's messaging. Oh no, it's scam likely. Listen, Upachan, I'm going to do it again. What? Are you serious? I decided to hide in a food supply box. Are you sure you want to rush things like that? Kim and Kamui and the others are going to come back. Pew Rep and the others have already failed once. I can't expect much more from them, so I have to do something myself. Uh, I see. Besides, I want to see Carol as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. Do you want to use that wooden doll? The substitute doll? But you said you can't use it. I don't know until I try. Better than not trying at all. I guess you're right. 
All right, let's shave the doll down to look just like you. <laughs> he is a blushy bird. <laughs> so cute. Upa taps the doll with his beak. The wood scraps fall, but it doesn't change much, probably because he's weak. Can I give it a try? Oh, sure. I take out a knife I stole from the kitchen. When I grip the wooden doll and knife, I feel strangely powerful. I feel like I know what to do next. This, this is... You are human, aren't you, Rizlin John? Me? Of course I'm human. But you can't usually do this unless you're a god. The wooden doll I carved begins to bulge and warp on its own as if it were alive, creating a life-sized doll that looks just like me. If you really are human, then you must be as powerful as the gods. It's not like there's never been someone like that before, I suppose. Some humans have powers like the gods? Yes, the boy hero Poyong... Oh, God. <laughs> Poyompe, Yo Supo of Saklahin, Iron Akur. Said to, be the hum said to be the human ancestor. But they're all legends. I've never seen them personally before. I can't bring myself to believe I have the power of a god. It doesn't feel real. Being able to make the doll might just be a coincidence, or it worked for some other reason. But if it is true, maybe it has something to do with why I'm being targeted. This definitely work. This will definitely work. But the put the doll on the bed. All right. Now it looks like you are still asleep. Now, oh, let's hurry up and hide. Yeah, we won't get Pew Rep and uh, Huaisu san until um, the two other routes come later, I think early next year, a few months. At which point you'll be getting all the screenshots of those as well. Because I got to share them with everybody. We both sneak into an empty box on the cart when no one is looking. What are we going to hunt today? Sea otter, right? Wait, is the cart always this heavy? There must be some stuff you forgot to unload from yesterday, right? I'll go check it out. Oh, what should I do? Hey, hurry up and get a move on. We're stuck here behind you, waiting. Sorry, sorry. It's not worth worrying about. Let's go. Whew. I don't know what's going on outside, but I hear the sound of the gate opening as the cart advances. I must be passing through the many doors I saw on my way here. The plan is going well. Hunting unit, stop! Huh? What is it? Gate guards! Let out all the gates! The woman is gone! Did they find out already? That human woman. Make sure she didn't sneak into the onto the carts. Hey, earlier you said. What should I do? It found. It's over. Wah wah wah! Fight! You can fight! That's right! Fat Rizlin! I do as I'm told and grip my hidden sword tightly. It's the same as when I use the doll. I feel power welling up inside me. I can use this. I can feel it. The lid of the box opens. At that moment... I have no idea. <laughs> I swing my sword wildly and the servant in front of me collapses. She's here! This woman isn't... Is it a human? The other servant, frightened by seeing his comrade fall to the ground, turns to run. Ha! Go for backup! This way! We have to break through the door! I slam into the door. It's shut tight. Use your sword! When I swing the wooden blade at the door, I feel it recoil. Even though the tip of the blade hadn't connected, I can feel an invisible force at work. The door shakes. We're almost through. Okay, it's broken. Wait! I hear the demon gods roar from the depths of the cave. The ground trembles as it approaches. Its claws reach out and almost grab me, but I dodge out of the way just in time. We race to the next door, finding it shut tight just like the last. I begin swinging my sword as fast and as hard as I can to break the seal. How dare you betray me! Oh, the demon god is angry! There's still no- there's still time! Hurry, Rizlin! 
The door isn't broken yet. While I'm stuck struggling in front of it, the demon god reappears on the other side of the fire. I barely manage to repel the yellow claws with my sword, but the demon's momentum is on another level compared to the servants I've encountered. The recoil from claws sends me flying and I fall sprawling backward onto the ground. Finally, the claws wrap around me. I try my hardest to resist, but I'm once again dragged deeper back into the cave. Hang in there, Rislin! Rep bursts in through the locked door, showering splinters everywhere, and slams his fist into the claws, clutching my body. In the moment the claws loosen their grip, someone grabs hold of me and lifts me up. <laughs> um, yeah, you. I think you spoiled it almost completely right. I think it's just missing an S or, or an H. Um, yeah, you know what? Honestly, playing through Mashera Chicks route, um. Yes, he is a, um, <laughs> he's a sad character. It's, it, I, I feel bad for him. It's true. Uh, okay, so what was that fire? There was a big blast of fire, and we heard someone say fight. I, I, I'm curious. What are you talking about? Let's get out of here. Why, Wislin? Why are you leaving me behind? Are you telling me to live in this dark prison without you? My only ray of light! I hear a sad roar. I feel a reluctance. But I shake it out of my head. I should not sympathize with the demon god. The god's roar fades into the distance. Purep holds on to me and dashes quickly out of the cave as fast as his legs can carry him. Don't go too far, Purep. She has been secured. Damn it! Purep turns around, looking annoyed, back toward where the demon god was. Both of you! You're here! Thank you so much! Yeah. Purep's expression was a mix of joy and confusion. We could not see a way of rescuing you, and we had been at a stalemate for so long. Sherichek's strong! The castle is strong. There are a lot of Kamun Kamui around here who are willing to help me. We didn't have enough help, help to take them on. Pew Rep is Kamun Kamui. In other words, he must have to fight the gods who are at the same level of, of power as him. Wisely suggested we try to convince the gods on Amashir Amasherichek's side to come to our side first. So we went around trying to convince them and the castle suddenly got noisy. I could smell your scent near the exit, but I rushed, rushed in as quick as I could to find you. Pureb and Huaisu-san, you were nearby doing your best the whole time. Okay, help him, whatever. <laughs> Just, you know. You are unharmed? Yeah, I'm fine. The question now is what to do with Masherichik. Are we just going to leave him like that? She is safe. We can leave him there to rot. There's a chance that Kashimpuk or whatever is going to come try to kidnap her again. Mishiracha cannot leave the castle. Only his lowly squires will come. We can deal with them. Are you going to charge in recklessly and let your fellows die again? <sighs> Fine, okay. Either way, I'll take you home first. Oh, at least we got out of there. When I return home after six days of captivity... The little girl who had beckoned me from the doorway the night I was kidnapped by Kashimpuk bursts into tears, runs to me, and hugs me tight. Uh, Sisekor Kamui, how could you allow this house's owner to be taken? What were you doing? Explain yourself. Oh, stop it. We were alone. I was tricked by Kashimpuk imitating your voice, and I carelessly left the house myself. It wasn't her fault. I crouch down in front of the frightened girl and speak to her gently. Sorry, you were worried about me. I'm back, so everything's okay now. Thank you. The girl smiles, runs down the hallway, and disappears. Well, I actually have to solve a deeper mystery than Mishirichik. He wasn't really the one after me. What do you mean? 
Shirachik talked about somebody else. He said he only kidnapped me to harass that person since they were the one after me in the first place. <sighs> he wanted to take whatever the other person wanted. It just so happened that it was me they wanted. Who is this other person? I don't know. I tried to ask him who he was talking about, but he wouldn't tell me. He seemed really angry at them. He said it was their fault he was locked up in the castle. You are sure you don't know them? Whatever the reason, that person wants you so badly that they want to take you away. No, the day I first met Purep was the day I learned gods really existed. Come to think of it, that was the day I first met Carol, too. It makes sense there was someone after you ate after you aside from Mashirachik. After all, the incidents in Bedoga and Kashira Wetland weren't Mashirachik's doing. How can you be so sure? Mashirachik took you to his castle. That castle was above the underworld, or more like somewhere between the heavens and the underworld. That Kamui Moser. But you died, and you came to Kamui Moser. Even if it was just a coincidence, you'd normally die and go to Pakna, Pakna Moser. Mashirachik's castle doesn't exist in either of those places. My death was an accident. I was tired and careless. Hey, Metnumi. It has to be because of that. If not, then it means I was killed by someone. It is highly likely that it was planned, at least in Kashiro Wetland. It felt to me like someone was conspiring to do something. Rizlin, you say that you accidentally stepped off the promenade? Yes. Did you realize you'd misstepped? I thought I was walking in the middle of the path, but suddenly there was nothing under my feet and I fell in. I remember the fog was so thick that I couldn't even see my feet. I felt traces of God's power near the promenade back then. I do not know who or what, however. Perhaps someone cast a spell on your surroundings to make it look like there was a path that in reality led to nowhere. That's... I look back and forth between Wasu and Purep. They both seem to have come to the same conclusion as they both avert their eyes and fall silent. That's a dirty way to do it. To make it look like an accident. Why would they have to make it look like an accident? Think about it. It is easy for a god to take a human's life. That's right. When I remember how they fight, killing me seems as easy to them as snapping my fingers. If a god, if, but if gods kill humans recklessly, we will face punishment for it. There's a kind of natural order to the world of gods we have to follow. I see. That is why they used an indirect method to do so that no one would know it was their doing. It's not that I don't have an idea of a god who specializes in such cunning and sneaky methods, but I can't cast doubt on him without any evidence. Think carefully. Are there any people you think are suspicious? In the back of my mind, I recalled the words Carol had said that bothered me back then. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary lately? Other than the night you met me, the wetlands, and yesterday. The day I met Carol, I collapsed on my way home and nearly froze to death, but I'm sure I never told him about it. I didn't want to worry him about something that didn't concern him. So how did he know something happened that day? I noticed it, but I let it go back then. I thought I was mistaken. No, that's what I wanted to believe, because I wanted to believe him. Can I ask you something? If a god were to take human form in the human world, would you both know he's a god? Is there any reason that even gods wouldn't recognize another god if they met each other? My nose works well, so I can more or less tell by the smell. Most of the time I can tell by their presence and gestures, but it is not unheard of to not be able to recognize another god. If we can't smell or sense anything, they'd have to be pretty good at pretending to be human. They'd have to be as powerful a god as Huaisu and me. I've known him for a while, so I, don't, I know what he is, but I hadn't. Maybe I wouldn't have known he was a god. You smell like a bear so badly I could not help but recognize you. I only feel that way because you know me, though, right? I'm sure a god who doesn't know me wouldn't notice. Purep's ears would surely be a dead giveaway, though. On the 
day I first met, went to Kamui Moser, I met someone that same day. The second time I went to Kamui Moser, I was with, was with the same person. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe it's just a coincidence. I have no idea if he's a god or not. Is there a way to find out discreetly? We god might be able to be outed by a dog, but judging from the way you speak about him. He must be very talented at disguising himself as a human. He would not be uncovered through such trivial means. There's an easy way to- there- there is an easy way! Just kill him! C kill After all, even the mightiest god can't maintain their form if they die. If he dies, his soul will just return to Kamui Moser. It doesn't matter. But what if he's actually a human, not a god? Ah, crap. If that were the case, I'd be mur- it'd be murder. <laughs> You'd have to be punished. Forget I said it. Hey, Rizlin Chan, that suspicious guy is your friend, no? Close with you, isn't he? Aw, oh, bless you, bird again. If you trust the guy, why don't you ask him directly? If you're wrong, so be it. Just pass it off as a joke. Opa Chan. Thank you. You're probably right. Yeah, I'll ask him directly. That sounds like a foolish decision. Would it not be dangerous? He helped me before. I want to believe in him. All right, but we will go with you. Okay, his name is... Carol Sasayama, right? Surprised, I look up. Waisu must have known it too, because he shares the same expression. I've been doubting him for a while. He was the most suspicious guy around you. But he smelled human, so I thought I was mistaken. His presence was undeniably human but I could not shake my suspicions. Two of them had suspected him long ago. Did they care about my feelings and were waiting for me to bring it up? I take out my phone. When Mashericha kidnapped me, I left my phone at home so I couldn't contact anyone. When I turn it on, there are several messages and calls from Carol. Are you all right, Rizlin? I'm worried you might get caught up in something bad again. Where are you now? I'm leaving for Saklahan tomorrow and I can't help but want to see your face. I hope you're doing well, even if I don't hear from you. Oh, Carol. He was worried and texted me over and over again, and the latest message was this morning. I'm back from Saklahan in N Nomuro now. If I can see you, I'll be waiting to hear from you. He's close. Perfect timing. It could be a trap. But I'm still going. Get him to a place no one else will be. Sorry for making you worry, Carol. I couldn't contact you because some things got complicated. But it'll be, it'll be nice to see you again. I have a place I want to go. Can you meet me there? I'll explain everything then. Yes, of course. That night, I cooked dinner for everyone to express my gratitude. It's a dish I learned at the Demon's Castle. What do you think? It's good! Sidatap's Oha. The food there was surprisingly decent. Waisu quietly brings the soup to his mouth. I know. They, hey, I didn't forget the bee. They forgot it. The demon god ate seals and stellar sea lion all the time. The people who work there ate Oha a lot. Isn't it great that your life at the castle came in handy? Say Karkamui joins us at the table and picks up her bowl with her small hands. Next time, try make try to make Oha with salmon. I like salmon better than walleye pollock. Alright. I'm grateful and a little in awe that a bunch of gods are gathered in this old house to have dinner. But it's still fun to eat in their company. I wonder if it's too optimistic to think that Carol should have been here too. It, it, it is good in a very good way, in a good way. That's, I am so charmed by this game. I'm like trying to announce it to everybody in the world by this play. It's, it's really, I don't know. I think this is, I, ha I, I love it. And it's kind of rekindling, rekindling my Otome love a little bit right now. I hope the developers are, are, are watching through my streams and they can read this. Or, or not read this, hear this. So anyways. The next day, when the sun sank in the west, west, 
will be headed to the meeting place for Renko. He'll be suspicious that I called him to the lake at this time, but if it turns into a battle, at least the fight will only harm the empty surrounding area. We cross the bridge and head for the sandbar. Not a single person is here since it's winter. I look around, wondering if Carol will show up. Then... I missed you, Rislin. <laughs> what? Why isn't he wearing your suit? He's got ears! <laughs> Very curious that you want to come and see the lake when it's this cold. Carol, it's you, isn't it? But your outfit, your... His appearance was different from usual, but he smiled with the same calm expression. Considering that you came to see me with those two, it seems there's no point in hiding anymore. I knew you were searing up Kamui! Zeran up Kamui are not particularly powerful gods. They are just better than anyone when it comes to deceiving people. Waisu's words were full of contempt. <laughs> I'm still called the Fox of Inari by Sisam. They even built, built me a splendid shrine. A pretty high status god, uh, god, you know. Sorry for calling you out like this. There's something I wanted to ask you. What? The first time we met was when you spoke to me at the bar in Nomuro. Was it a coincidence that you talked to me, or did you have a motive? I had a motive. I went out of my way to talk to you at that time. Why? For reasons. I'll get straight to the point. Were you the one who tried to kill Rislin in a Bitoga and Kashira wetland? That's correct. He answered calmly without hesitation. No way. Tell me it's a lie. The first time, I added a little something special to your drink and let you sleep comfortably in the snow. The second time, I made you misunderstand where you were going and let you fall into Yachimanako. I wanted him to deny it, but the way he explained how he killed me so matter-of-factly destroyed my all my hopes. My chest tightens, and I start to feel dizzy. Rislin! I sink down to my knees. I, I'm fine. Tell me, Carol. Why did you kill me? I just wanted to tease some humans a little. When a young woman loses her life all of a sudden, the people around her get flustered. It's funny to see their faces. You don't need to hide it now, do you? Tell me the truth. Do you know Mishericic? I haven't met him personally, but I know of him. The truth is, I was held prisoner in Mishirachik's castle on the Sheratoko Peninsula until yesterday. He said he kidnapped me to harass me. He said someone was trying to take me away, so he took me away before they could. Is he talking about you? No, it's not about me. Sorry, I lied a little earlier about the reason I killed you. It wasn't to have some fun with you. I know who Mishirachik resents. They killed you at their request. They gave me a great deal in return. A pitiful move. Who is it? Answer me! You've been asking me a lot of questions, haven't you? Isn't it about time you gave me something in return? Give me that human over there. You went through the trouble of bringing her here. Carol's gaze shifts to me. His cold eyes look like he's eyeing up some expensive object. I vaguely knew he wasn't human, but I didn't think the reason he hid it was to do anything bad to me. Even when he said he killed me, I thought that he must have been forced into it. I expected him to say that. However, such a sweet illusion is shattered. His kindness, those sweet words, the way he worried about me. I just recalled a rumor. You were the white fox of Sasayama. The notorious white fox in Ishashi. Oh, so you do know me, as expected of the knowledgeable Sarurun Kamui. <laughs> His name's hard. Sarurun Kamui sama. You know him? It is a white fox famous for doing terrible things to people. The incident of the warship being sunk has made him especially notorious. A warship? At the end of the Edo period, a group from the shogunate sailed to Hokkaido and attacked Asashi with a warship called the Kayomaru. It was the most advanced ship in the world at the time. But the Kayomaru cruelly sank in Asashi. 
because of the white fax that disguised himself as a water guide and intentionally ran it to ground. <laughs> what is those? Oh, you're just spamming letters now, BB-10. I try my best to remember what I learned about the Hakodate War in school. At the end of the Edo period, some of the defeated former shogun's retainers went to Hokkaido to oppose the Meiji government and established a new government of their own. Harold was the one who sank the former shogunate's army's warship. It was always just something I had read in textbooks before. It didn't feel real. Humans and gods probably have very different concepts of lifespan, but I wonder how long they've all lived. That was because Enomoto fired cannons at my home. I was upset and sank it. I wouldn't do something like that for no reason. Carol, have I done something to you? Did I do something bad enough that you want to kill me? You haven't done anything. If I had to say, it's because of your soul. That doesn't make any sense. Rislin, this is the kind of creature Serenup Kamui is. He has little power, but he deceives people for his own selfish reasons. The look of despair on people's faces is his greatest pleasure. He is an abomination. Oh, woe is me. I am nothing like the great Saran Kamui, revered since ancient times, the subject of many arts and fates. Even now there are many people who worship you. Carol narrows his eyes airily and licks his lips. And you and your friend's eggs are exquisite. The chicks are particularly delicious. Uh-oh. With those words, a gust of wind races through the air. Waisu flies up towards the sky, and ripples of air spread all around, crashing to the surface of the lake. The whirlwind heads for Carol. Carol reaches out his hand, and a wall of intense flame forms in front of him. Waisu pursues without hesitation. Countless feathers fly through the air and charge through the wall of flames to attack Carol. His clothes are torn apart where the feathers graze him. Carol flees deeper into the sandbar. The ground shakes with the sound of an explosion. Before he can react, Pew Rep appears behind Carol, his fist slamming into him, or so he thought, but... Carol dodges out of the way with easy, nimble movement. Pewrep's fist plunges into the forest floor, and all the trees around him are mowed down like blades of grass. What? What happened? Go back! Why did it do that? Alright, here we go. We gotta go back here. Must have accidentally skipped. Oh my god, what is- I think- okay, this is a bug. Uh, hold on. I don't have auto on, do I? Uh, I'm gonna have to, um, settings. Hold on. Well, it's not letting me... Why is it skipping? It is drunk. Alright, well, we're just gonna go here. Um, sorry, I'm just reading this here, like, this for you guys. All right. Carol flees deeper into the sandbar. The ground shakes with the sound. Okay, well, we read this, right? Oh, because it's doing it over again. Pewrep draws his sword. He kicks off the ground and slashes at Carol. He slashes over and over, gradually cutting off his path of retreat. Every time he kicks off the ground, the earth shakes with a tremendous boom. Stop running away from me, you coward! Try harder to catch me. Okay. In an instant, Carol is standing on the surface of the lake. I've changed my mind. I'll tell you the name of the one I serve. Samayankur. I've never heard that name before. Who's that? Aren't they a god? Why are you telling us this? Why did you change your mind? I'll give you a freebie. I'm not going to give you any more information for free. Listen, are you always going to believe in them and rely on them like this? He looks at me coldly again. Haven't you ever wondered? These two are renowned warriors among the gods. Why do, they, you, why do you think two such gods joined you? Because I asked for their help. To receive the blessings of a god, you need to offer a great deal of compensation. 
you honestly think they're risking their lives to fight for the likes of your clumsy in off? Don't you think there's something else behind it? Perhaps I'm not the only traitor. Who knows? Don't listen to him, Rizlin! As expected, you're good at deceiving people's hearts with lies. Two of them head for Carol at the same time, as if to pincer him from both sides. A circle of flames rises, rises from the surface of the lake, with Carol at the center. Fire quickly changes shape and writhes like the body of a snake aiming for Pura. Pura slashes with the sword, blowing away the flaming serpent and shrinking its form with pure force as the blade finally reaches Carol. Carol disappears as the tip of the sword connects. The sheer momentum of the attack plunges Pura into the surface of the lake. Many arms burst out from the surface of the water and drag Pura under. Pura! Damn it! Pura thrashes out, trying to shake off the arms grabbing him. A huge wave forms on the quiet surface of the lake and rages out to the shore. It's a water kajim book! Not like the one at Basharachek's castle! That Serenup! Did he have to th have these things, these guys on his side? When the waves subside, Pura is nowhere to be seen. It's hard to fight two of you at the same time. Carol is standing far away from where Pew Rep had tried to attack him. Despite his words, his usual cool expression remains unchanged. Waisu stops his pursuit and cautiously keeps his distance. He spreads his arms and releases another torrent of arrow-like feathers. The feathers spread out in all directions, enveloping Carol like a net. Carol grabs a feather with purpose. Blood sprays from his hand as it touches it shoots a flame from his hand that spreads across all the feathers binding him. Ha! The flames head straight for Huaisu. Huaisu grimaces without loosening his grip on Carol. When the look of things, we're in trouble. Oh boy. Oh boy. Who do I help? Huaisu or Purep? I think... Actually, I know I who I have to. to get... Unless I want, a, I want an ending that I don't want. Um. Okay, we're gonna help Huaisu. At this rate, the battle will continue until one of them dies. Waisu is in immediate danger. Pewrep will be fine. Knowing him, he'll do something about it himself. If I help, I might be able to put an end to the battle. I get my wooden sword. Hey, are you crazy? No matter how much divine power you have, you can't beat. I don't have to win. I only have to stop them. I swing my sword. I feel the wind pressure against me. Again, I aim straight for Carol and swing my blade. The shockwave hits Carol, or so I thought. Something repels it. Oof! Thanks to you, I was able to figure out a strategy. Thank you. Waisu has created an invisible wall of wind. It seems I've accidentally exposed his trump card. Stay out of my way, Wisdom. Stalemate is lifted. Carol extinguishes the flames and closes the distance in one bound. For the first time, he's on the offensive. Carol extends his arm, using his nails to slice straight through to Huasu. The attack is aimed at his throat, but Huasu avoids it and instead it digs into his shoulder. Huasu's clothing is stained blood with stained blood red, red with blood. Same thing. He loses his balance and descends to the lake surface. Carol in, his, in pursuit. I swing my sword again. Carol blocks my attack with a wall of fire. Without warning, an arm leaps out of the lake and grabs hold of Carol's leg. He desperately flies upward to try to shake it off. Pewrip flies out from the lake with him. I got him! Pewrip draws his, first, his fist back with his free arm, still tightly gripping Carol. There's nothing stronger than Pewrip. The battle is decided. Close my eyes at the shock and flash of light as our bodies both burst into flames and everything fades away to light. When I open my eyes, all I see is Pewrep covered in blood. He is badly burned. Pewrep, are you okay? Where's Carol? A scrap of his bloody clothes had fallen on the surface of the water. He got away. 
He set off an explosion to block my attack. Must have given himself some serious injuries. Do you think he's... <sighs> he's probably alive. We cannot just leave him be. He may come after her again. I, I think it's their bodies. Uh, clearly this, this, the, the, the script needs a little bit, uh, another, um, proof, proof editing pass. You not just leave him be. He may come after her again. Yeah. Ugh. Purep's face twists in pain. Purep, let's treat your wounds first. Besides, I'd rather know that who this someone Sama Yankur is the chase after Carol. I know where to go for treatment. Got his name Matnasiri. But I'll take me but it'll take me some time to recover. Sorry. But I'll have to leave the fight for a while. While I'm at it, I'll go ask about Sama Yankur. Waisu, can I leave her to you? You do not have to ask me. Few rep disappears, saying he'll be fine on his own. I look around in shock and awe. All the trees have been blasted down in a giant crater, and giant craters are everywhere. There's nothing left of the way the sandbar lurked before we arrived. I shudder to think of what would have happened if there was someone here and they got caught up in the battle. By the way, regarding Sama Young Kerr, I have one person in mind. I do not know if they are the same person, though. Who do you think? That person is not a god. They are human, but they are powerful enough to stand an unequal footing with the gods. However, their existence is a myth. It's the same as Poyon Poyompi and Yel Yelsupo. Rumor has it that he used another god for his own selfishness, incurred the wrath of the gods, and ended up in the six gold hell hundreds of years ago. The person Carol said was that person. That means they're after me from the depths of hell, right? It's impossible. Besides, they lived a few hundred years ago. They would not even know of your existence today. I guess you're right. I have a nagging feeling in the back of my mind like some kind of an alarm bell ringing. I'm already so confused that I can't think straight anymore. I decide to go back home to my house in Batoka for now. I don't even know. I'm just, I'm, I'm butchering these names. Why, Susan? Do you hate Carol? I don't know that much about him, but I can't imagine he targeted me for the sake of a simple self-interest. I still have no idea what he's really thinking. I told you, Serenup Kamui is cunning and selfish, eliminating anything that stands between him and what he desires. But you don't know anything about Carol himself. That's just your superficial impress impression of him. So you think you know him better than me, because he decided to tell you some pretty words and lavish you with attention. Oh, exactly! I like the pretty words. Give me more honeyed words now. No, that's not it. When I was held captive in Mishirachik's cap castle, he came to rescue me. I thought I heard his voice in that castle, but I wasn't sure. During the battle, I was certain I saw the exact same fire in the castle. You saw it too, didn't you? Hmm. I suppose. If he hadn't slowed the demon god down, I wouldn't have been able to escape, and I would have been recaptured. If he didn't tell me to fight, I would have been killed without realizing my power. Oh, so that was, uh, Carol. <laughs> Sorry, it's easy. Oh, God, sneeze again. No, I'm okay. You can easily fake kind words, but his actions are an undeniable fact. And if that is the case, the only reason he saved you from the castle is because he would not be able to hand you over to Sam Samayan Kerr otherwise. Samayan Kerr is in the sixfold hell. Another alarm bell rings in my head. Why, Susan, I have an idea. Please listen to me. It depends on what you are going to say, but say it anyway. I'm thinking of going to talk to Carol. Alone. I... I mean, if you and Purep were to come with me, you'd have to fight again, right? Don't you think if you go alone, you will just be killed again? If he wanted to, he could have done so for a long time. I spent two nights at his house before, but he didn't kill me then. 
There were plenty of other chances, but he didn't. I'm sure he's still hiding something. There was a simple explanation for that. He was probably just waiting for the right opportunity. He must have needed to ensure he would not be obviously tied to your death and make it look like an accident. Why did he call me over to his house? Given what happened today, I doubt he's on my side. He may well be deceiving me like you said, but before you guys kill him, I want to know what his true intentions are. It's not that I believe, Carol. I just don't want to waste an opportunity to resolve things peacefully, even if there's only the slightest chance we can. If I fail, it's not like you couldn't do whatever you want with him after anyway, right? You like him. No, that's not what I meant. As your guardian god, I advise you to not let the momentary wavering of your heart fool you. Human should be bonded with human, and God should be bonded with God. If human and God try to connect, they will only face misfortune and death. Deep down, I feel like it's somehow wrong for humans and gods to become close, but what do you mean by face misfortune and death? A fitting end will come for those who dis disobey the reason for the world. He says those words so in an unusually strong tone of voice. He answered, but the words are not really an answer at all. I wonder if something like that has happened in the past. It sounds like he is convinced that if humans and gods were to cross paths, they wouldn't be able to be happy. However, this that isn't the reason for the strange feeling I've been having. In any case, I cannot allow you to wander off to die alone. Do you even know where he is? No. Waisu exhales in exasperation. We will wait for Purep to come back. His nose might actually be useful. Understood? All right. Well, good night then. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> well, I don't know why Twitch's notifications are horrible. Waisu san, I'm going to sleep, so would you mind leaving my room? I will stay here and watch. Someone may come and attack at any moment. It's fine because Sisei Kamui-chan is here. I won't be able to sleep if there's a man standing there staring at me. Why, Susan, please, use my grandpa's room. Unlike some other lowly gods, I haven't lost enough dignity to make that stupid mistake with a human, but if that is what you want, I will do as you wish. Hey, Rislin chan what are you doing? Hey, do you think I can fool Huaisu-san with this? I show him the wooden doll that looks just like me, like the one I made at Mishirichik's castle. Don't tell me you're really going to visit Serena Kamui by yourself. That's right. It's too dangerous. I think Sororon Kamui is right. To be honest, I'm not sure I can trust him. Why not? I still don't know why he followed me. When I first met him, he said he wasn't looking for Inna or Saki in return, but he still hasn't told me what he wants. Don't tell me you're ta taking Saren up Kamui's words seriously. I actually believe in that those two have some ulterior motives or something. What do you think, Upachan? You know I can't give them any grand offerings or anything. Is it normal that a great god will fight for me and protect me even if I can't offer them anything much in return? Oh, no, no, no. That's not normal. Usually, if you happen to be blessed by a god at most, the next day's hunt will go well. So you are super lucky. See? is It is weird after all. Well, I'm hoping I'm just lucky. You said you'd help protect me, so please be honest with me. <sighs> There's something else that's been bothering me. Why Susan just made it clear that some up Sama Young Kur is in the sixfold fold hell. God, these words. But I don't know if that Sama Young Kur person Carol talked about and that legendary person who I soon mentioned are the same people. I think both you and I think it's just some random myth, right? Yeah, you're right. It's strange that he didn't say anything to Pew Rep and brought up the subject after he had left. I feel like he's hiding something. 
Also, seeing him offhandedly look down on Carol makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Hmm. But judging from what we saw of him yesterday, I think Saren up Kamui is exactly as the rumors say. I'm only natural. It's only natural that Huaisu would look down on him. I guess so. Even so, I want to understand him. Well, I've already said I'll help you. So I'll go with you. You get in danger, I'll race back and tell those gods. <sighs> Thank you. By the way, where are you headed? You don't know where he is, do you? I just said that to get Huaisu-san off my back. I actually do have an idea. First, we need to head to Sapporo. I knew it. He's not here. <laughs> she is. She's just whispering though. It's fine. Actually, when um when Upachan um talks, if you're not a god or I clearly Rizlin, all you hear are chirps. It's actually really cute. May I help you? Do you need something from the president? I'm surprised I turn around to see an unfamiliar man in a suit. He's giving me a suspicious look. Um, who are you exactly? My name is Otobe, the secretary at the president's office in Sasayama Far East Trading. An employee of this company. What should I do? If I say something weird, he'll suspect me. Uh, I'm Hallis. I'm Mr. Sasayama's friend, and I was supposed to meet him today. But as he's not here, he must have forgotten. Well then, excuse me. Please wait. The president fell ill the day before yesterday and isn't seeing anyone right now. Did you really have an appointment? He is looking more and more suspicious, at this rate. Actually, I was lying when I said I was just his friend. I have a closer relationship with him. But he stopped contacting me the day before yesterday. I'm worried that he got into an accident or something. If he just doesn't want to see me anymore, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. Otobe must not have expected this. He's clearly flustered. The president is really in a relationship? Please excuse me, Hallasan. He is too sick to see anyone at the moment. That's why I came to the office out of concern, but according to the concierge, he hasn't been back here at all. It's rare for him to do something like this, so I've been very concerned. He always lets me know where he's going. So you haven't seen him either? Did you know he was in tomorrow the day before yesterday? Oh well, yes. Would you like to have a chat over a cup of tea? If we share what we know, we might be able to figure out where he is. Very well. <laughs> I'm not corrupting him. There's just kissing. Just kissing. That's it. I don't see anything lewd either, but... I see. So he got... He said he got stuck in Namuro. Yes, he said he'd be recuperating at home, so he wouldn't be able to see anyone. The day before yesterday was when the battle happened. He'd been seriously injured fighting with Pew Rep must have gone somewhere to heal his wounds. So you think he could have gone back to his family's home? Hmm. It would be fine if that was the case, although he has never really said anything about his family home or even his family to come to think of it. I only know that he was born in Isashi. The company has been in the family for generations, right? You don't know about the previous president? Oh, by the time all the current employees started working for them, the previous president had already retired. No one's ever seen them before. They don't even have any photos of them but be because apparently the family hates photography. It's a little strange, you know? But the current president takes on all the important workers, so there's no there's been no problems. What I'm most worried about is that he might have gotten dragged into something bad. He has a strong sense of justice. A strong sense of justice? Yes, he doesn't care if it's the Yakuza or a random poacher. He won't hold back against someone who's cheating or pressuring him. He just faces them all head on. Which makes me worry. Otobe holds his head in his hands. I remember what happened in Ataru. The employees seem to know that he's been doing things like that behind the scenes. I'm sure he's... I'm sure he's a kind person. I don't think he hates a lot of people. He saved me before. I don't know. He doesn't seem very willing to help people. Even if he doesn't intend to, he still ends up helping people a lot in the end. Ah, but when you put it that way, it really does sound like him. 
Thank you for sharing your story with me. Sorry I couldn't be of much help. Not at all. Oh, right. Here's my business card. If you learn anything about the president, please let me know. Of course. After parting ways with the Tobe, Upa pokes his head out of my bag. Wah! Are you okay? Can you breathe? I'm good. Where are you heading next? I think I need to find Carol's family home. The tallest mountain in Asashi. I'll go there. In what is now called the end of the Tokugawa era, the samurai at the time didn't think that time, that the time of the shoguns would be over. Towards the end of that period, the balance between the anti-shogunate faction and the Edo Bakufu faction was leaning in the anti-shogunate faction's favor. On October 14, 1867, the 15th shogun Yoshinobu Tokugawa returned all governmental power to the imperial court. I know all about all of this stuff from Hakuoki. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Thank you, Hakuoki, for helping me, helping me learn about um, Japanese history. However, despite this, the armed conflict only continued to intensify. The loyal retainers who resisted the collapse of the Idu Bafuku continued to fight. Takiyake Enemoto, an admiral of the navy of the Idu Bakufu, the Japanese feudal government headed by the shogun, refused to hand over the navy to the new government and escaped from Ishinagawa in August 1868 with eight ships and the warship Kayo Maro as its flagship. In October of the same year, Toshizo Hijikata and other remnants of the shogunate forces regrouped in Sendai. In November 1868, the fleet led by Enomoto entered Hakodate port. Mr. Enomoto, I heard you were studying abroad in the Netherlands. Indeed, I was involved in the construction of the Caillou Maro and sailed it back here. It must have been a long journey. You're quite right. We stopped at Rio de Janeiro on the way, past the Cape of Good Hope, through the East Indies to Yokohama. It was a long five months. After returning home last year, I went into battle on this ship at a dizzying pace. After all the hardships we've endured together, this ship is no different than my body and my soul. And I have no intention of handing it over. What is that Dutch book that you seem to be treasuring? It's a book about international law. Our country is going to need diplomacy from now on. I'll translate it into Japanese once this war is over and I can make time for it. How wonderful. No one in Japan has such knowledge of international law yet, after all. You seem to know a lot about foreign countries, Mr. Sasayama. Oh, yes. There's a lot of trade going on around here. So we get a lot out of, of outside information passing through. Do you know the clothing called Ezo Nishiki, presented to the shogunate from Ezo? It's called Ezo, but do you think this design is from Ezo? No, it obviously looks like clothes from the Qing dynasty. Of course. I'm sure you know better than I about the existence of what is true and what is false, but... For the shogunate officials, Sakoku was a total falsehood. In truth, they wanted a rare item from a foreign country, or perhaps they needed it. That clothing came from the king to Far East Russia and entered Ezo via Sakhalin. In other words, oops, I should probably keep my mouth shut. Hm. Mr. Anamoto, how long are you going to continue the charade of being the shogun's retainer? You should create a new country for yourself. You've seen the world, and you know how outdated the shogunate's feudal system is. Hijikata, the man in charge of the army, put his hand on the hilt of his sword with a murderous look in his eyes and took a step toward me. Enomoto was the one to stop him. You say some dangerous things at, the, at times, Mr. Sasayama. I admit you have extraordinary intelligence, but if you're not careful with your words, you'll shorten your life. Fox. As they passed by each other, Hijikata murmured in a voice only Carol could hear. This was the one and only time he felt chills run down his spine.
This is the town of Asashi. When herring fishing was still prosperous, they used to say Asashi's maze like Edo's. But I wonder where all the crowds went. I look up at the tallest mountain in Asashi on the map. There's a mountain called Sasayama. Same name as him. It's a good bet he was born and raised on that mountain. I don't know if he's there now, but maybe I'll find something useful anyway. Is this the way to get up the mountain? I'm not even on the trail yet and my cell phone's out of service. It's already spring, but it's a mountain covered in snow. You'll die if you go up there. If I was a normal human, I would. I don't feel that cold right now, thanks to whatever this divine power is that I seem to have. Walking through the snow isn't as tiring as it used to be. gotten pretty dark. I'm not sure where we are. Are you sure this is the right path? Seems so, according to the map. The trail is hidden in the snow. I'm not sure. It was fine in the beginning, but now I've started to lose my breath. Might be better to turn back. Oh, there's a light on top of the mountain. So there is. There's no one else around. So suspicious. Opachan, am I still alive? Remembering that I'd wander into Kamui Moser without knowing before, I felt uneasy and wanted to make sure. You're alive. Hang in there. Oh, it's Saren of Kamui. Oh yeah, Fox. Carol? No, that's not him. Yeah, Carol's supposed to be a white fox. One fox after another appears out of nowhere. Before long, we are surrounded by a large number of foxes. They stand motionless, silently glaring at us. It feels like they were warning us not to come near. I'm here to see Carol. Just me. Oh, just me and Upachan. We're not enemies. We just came to talk. If he's here, would you let us through? They remain silent, unmoving. Then I realized that several of them have shifted their eyes to look at my waist. Are they looking at my sword? I take the sword off my belt and hold it out to them. If you don't trust me, I'll hand you my weapons. The fox steps forward and takes the sword I'm holding out to them into their mouth. With that, the other foxes stand up and move away, clearing a path. Will you let me through? Before long, a Tory gate comes into view. I can see the shrine grounds through it. It looks like we finally made it to the top. I look around, trying to find Carol in the shadows. Did you come here all alone to kill me? I turn around to see Carol standing there. He's smiling as usual, but his face is deathly pale. Carol! Are those foxes your friends? They let me through, so you know that's not the case. So, you came all this way to be killed by me again. I shake my head. If you wanted to kill me, you had plenty of chances. You could have just now. But I'm not dead yet, which means I think we have some talking to do. You really are, Softy. You're always lying when you say that. That's right. You figured it all out already, haven't you? I lie, deceive people, and eliminate anyone who gets in my way. It's not all you are. What do you know? People who really hate humans don't blend into human society and don't operate trading companies for generations. I looked into your company. It is definitely a real company. President's name has changed a few times, but since there hasn't been a single picture of him for generations, and every time the president changes, he changes his employees, I'm guessing all the presidents are the same person. You. You mentioned warships before. Warships from the United States. That was back in the Edo period when the black ships arrived, right? Anyone would be shocked to see a huge steam-powered ship in an age when you only knew sailboats. You saw it. 
you, you said you were thrilled by human potential. Those words didn't sound like a lie. You remember what I told you after that, right? The Japanese government ordered a ship from the Netherlands that copied the American Navy's warship's designs. That warship was the Kayo Maru. I sank it. it. Came to occupy Asashi and fired cannons at my home. I'm sure you wanted to end the Civil War. Um, no, if it was Cyril, it would be a C. <laughs> and if it was Cyril, I probably would not like this character as much. <laughs> Just because his name is Cyril. Um, it's Carol. Because I think it's, see, um, I don't know. I think it's Carol. Whatever. Wait! <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying, Cassie. Oh my god. Anyways. You wanted to end the Civil War. You've always admired the new things that come from the sea, and I'm sure you knew that the Shogunate forces would fight on to the last. To you, that Civil War must have looked like pointless war that just hurt the lands and its people for nothing. Isn't that why you tried to end it quickly? You fall silent for a while. He stares into space, as if remembering something. Commander Enomoto, we're in trouble! The Kayumaru has run aground! What? How did that happen? The ship was washed away by the waves during the storm. I knew the storm was coming. That's why I ordered the guy to move the ships to safety. We moved as instructed, but it seems we've been stranded on a reef. There was one strange thing. The anchor was supposed to be down, but we found it up. What about Mr. Sasayama? I haven't seen him for a while now. Mr. Sasayama, where are you? Did you call me? Explain yourself! What is the meaning of this? <laughs> I seem to have shown them the wrong path. Was it you who raised the an anchor? Silence is an affirmation. You did this on purpose? Hey, Takiyaki, I have a proposal. Why don't you surrender, Yoshinobu? Tokugawa surrendered Edo Castle. He gave up fighting and abandoned you. The general you serve is gone. How long are you going to continue this fight? The Shogunate has hope. We will restore the Shogunate faction here. You must be a spy for the Satsuma Choshu. No way. I'm not interested in human conflicts. I don't know who you are, but you'll be beheaded here. Oh, no. Don't you think you should be helping the crew of the ship instead of taking my head? Damn. Damn it! Evacuate the entire crew! It's not Carol, it's Carol. It sounds so similar to Carol, but it's Carol. Let's say you're right about that. But it's also true that I lied to you, got close to you, and killed you. That's an undeniable fact. To take, to, to take me to Samayankur, right? Yeah. That's a lie, too. I met Odebe-san, and we had a chat. No matter how great the return, you wouldn't help out some lowlife. That's what I think. I don't think you have the capacity to accept being used by someone else. I take a deep breath and begin to tell him my thoughts. The night I met you in the, in the Numuro, I chased after some strange lights and arrived in Kamui Moser. Now that I've seen the same flames many times, I understand. That was you. I didn't go to Kamui Moser by accident. You led me there. If Sama Yankur really is in the Sixfold Hell, that means I avoided going to them by ending up in Kamui Moser. You killed me not to bring me to that person, but to keep me away from them. Am I wrong? You have quite the imagination. I'm surprised you can be so optimistic. I was trying to understand you in my own way, so I thought hard about it. I doubt you're the kind of person who'd be happy to deceive others out of self-interest, so I've been trying to figure out the meaning behind what you've done. This is all I can think of. You're such a softy. 
Carol reaches out to me. I tense up warily for a moment, but he strokes my hair. You racked your brains over such a thing. You climbed a snowy mountain just to tell me that? Why? Well, because I... I don't... <laughs> Close your eyes, BB Ted. Before I can finish saying those words, Carol pull puts a gentle hand on the back of my head, suddenly pulling my lips to his. I can't process what is happening, and my mind goes blank. The touch of his lips on mine is gentle and warm. We kiss for what seems like a thousand years. Mm. Our lips part. I slowly open my eyes, and his sorrowful eyes stare back at me. My face becomes flushed and I involuntarily avert my gaze. He places both hands on my cheeks, forcing me to look at him again and pulls me closer. Hey, hey, what does this mean? I won't say anything more. I'm sure you'll see through it all anyway. He gently whispers to me and our lips meet again. <coughs> Oh, please excuse me. It's not like I came out because I'd been forgotten and couldn't bear to see a young couple having a good time right in front of me or anything. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not like I forgot you or anything. Give <laughs> Ted, stop crying. It was just a sweet, innocent, chaste kiss. There was nothing behind it, okay? Other than feelings of love. Embarrassed all of a sudden, I, even I can tell my face is turning bright red. Unable to bear it any longer, I turn away from Carol. It's with the bird. Uh, this is Upachan. He's been following and helping me. Huh? Carol nods, clearly disinterested. Rislin, I need you to believe me. I promise I'll protect you, no matter what. He wraps his strong arms around me from behind and whispers gently into my ear. My face becomes hot again. As proof of my promise, from now on, I will be your guardian god. I know you've been protecting me this whole time. You're the one who came to save me from Mishirichik, right? Yeah, friends weren't all that reliable. At that moment, I feel the air around me shift and change. Hold that thought. We'll talk later. We have a guest. Ooh. Please, stay here and hide. Carol leads us further into the shrine. There's a barrier around the top of the mountain. Don't leave the shrine grounds. As long as I don't die, this place is safe. Wait, where are you going? I reflexively grab onto his sleeve. Are you going to do something dangerous? I'm going to say hello to our guest. Wait, I'm coming too. You're still hurt, you know. No need. Didn't say I'm just going to say. Didn't I just say I'm just going to say hello? If something does happen and the barrier breaks, please go to that Kimunkamui Pew Rep. Don't hesitate. Immediately. Got it? I'll explain later. With one last glance, he closes the door and disappears into the mist. I can't hide my anxiety. I wonder who else came here. I don't know. We wait quietly. Every now and then, thunder booms overhead. There's no doubt something is happening outside. I suppress my unease and stay put as Carol asks me to. The fog's cleared. Realizing Upachan is right, I slowly peek my head out to take a look outside. The foggy grounds have cleared and I can see the sky through the clouds. But in the next instant, the deep mist once again envelops everything around us. This mist at the top of the mountain is the true nature of the barrier. The barrier is failing. It seemed to break for a moment, but it looks like it came back again. Hey, Rizlin, let's go to Kimun Kamui. Either way, I think it's safer to stay with him. No, no, I have to save, I have to save Carol. We're going to go outside to see what's happening. Well, based on past experience, I can't exactly rely on what Carol has to say. Well, that's what I'm telling you. Anyway, I can't leave him behind and go to Pew Rep. I'm going to check on him outside. Hey, hey, are you crazy? 
after a moment, the door to the shrine opens a little. I assume it must be Carol coming back, but it turns out to not to be the case. A lone fox enters, holding something in its mouth. It's my sword. You returning it to me? After I take the sword, the fox returns to the door and turns to face me. You want me to come with you? Considering it gave you your sword back, I must want you to do something with it. I instantly run out of the shrine as fast as my feet can carry me. The outside of the shrine grounds is completely covered in mist, but I run after the fox as fast as I am able. Before long, the mist clears and I can see again. There's a trail of fresh blood on the snow. Taking a deep breath, I begin to follow it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yup. <sighs> Fuck. Why, Susan? What are you doing here? Rizlin, I distinctly remember telling you not to go alone. He glares at me with cold eyes. There's no blood on his clothing. The bloodstains on the ground don't belong to him. I frantically look around for where the blood leads to. Carol! Carol is lying on this in the snow, a pool of deep red blood below him. When I call out to him, he sits up slightly and gives me a troubled smile. Sorry, Rislin. I ended up saying more than hello. Stay there, Rislin. It will be easy to kill him this time, as it seems he has still not recovered from the previous battle. Even so, he will kill you if you get, clo get too close. I stand in front of Huaisu's raised hand. Wait, Huaisu! I'm talking to him! Don't fight him! Why are you defending him? I came to save you. When the opportunity arises, he will kill you and take you to the Sixfold Hell. Have you been deceived by his rap, his raving again? No. He was trying to keep me away from Sama Yankur. Please, listen to me. There is no need. I shall destroy him and take you back. This is too strange. Why is Huaisu so stubbornly refusing to talk? Answer me, Huaisu. How did you know we were here? You were following me. Why are you taking that stance against me? If you wanted to help me, you would have stopped me before I came here. You're not with Purep, either. You know about Samanyankur, don't you? What? What are you? My grip on the swords tightens reflexively. I'm your guardian god. Did you turn your sword on me in defense of Cyrenup? Waisu glances over at Carol. The god of conspiracy seems to be good at enticing women. Seems that way. Are you getting mad at... Wait. Oh. Are you getting mad that you're being betrayed? <laughs> that, 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 that line needs some editing. I had to think about it. <sighs> Jealousy, like humans, is unsightly. You, who should have been proud of your honor as a pure and noble god, have fallen so far. Carol spits blood onto the snow-covered ground. Oh, for fuck's sake, stop it. Oh, hold on. Yeah, check into this. What is that? Oh. That was a phishing scam. I just had to make sure that wasn't something important. Oh, all right, sorry. Carol spits blood onto the snow-covered ground and taunts him with his usual smile. I feel a wave of burning anger toward Waisu welling up in my heart. I love Carol. He may be a god, but I'm free to love whoever I like, right? <sighs> Waisu, please, get out of here. Waisu furrows his brow. You haven't given me an offering yet. It's because you won't tell me what you want. Come with me now. That is my desire. I go with you. Will you save Carol? Yes. No, Rizland. Don't ever follow him. This Sararun Kamui is working for Samayankur. Is that true? I ask Waisu in complete shock. Instead of answering, he spreads his arms wide. His wings stretch out to surround me, trying to catch me like a net. I have no choice but to fight. I quickly unsheath my sword and, with all my strength, I slice through the wings. It feels good.
good. Rizlin, don't fight him. Go to the Kimen Kamui right now. I don't know how much about him. I don't know much about him, but he doesn't seem that stupid. Like this guy, he won't be your enemy. Tell Kimon Kamui about what happened here. Don't let him catch you. What are you going to do? You still worried about me at this point? <laughs> Just like you said, I'm good at manipulating women's hearts. Why your heart was part of the fun. Playtime's over. Go, I'll free you. Go. I'm sick of your nonsense, Carol. You don't have the slightest desire to be seen in a good light, and you go out of your way to mislead people. <sighs> Cunning, sneaky, selfish. It's like you want to be seen as those stereotypes rather than deny the reputation everyone pushes onto you. I kind of get it. Sometimes I'm told by others that I'm responsible and a good girl, and I play the role of what they imagine me to be. <sighs> Whatever you say, I won't abandon you and just run away. Thank you for saving me at Mishirichik's castle. Thank you so much for telling me I have this power. Plant my feet on the ground and drop my hips. Then kick off the ground as hard as I can. I close the distance to move to Waisu in the blink of an eye, slashing with all my strength. Two, three times? I can feel the sword brushing past his clothing. I'm getting closer and closer with every swing. Just a little more and I'll... The feeling is gone. Waisu is floating in the sky. I don't want to kill you. If you refuse my wishes, I'll have you die and take your soul as my due. His blue eyes pierce me. An intense urge to kill radiates from him. Waisu spreads his arms. Feathers and falling snow mingle in a rush of wind that battles me from all sides. I try to avoid them, but my vision is blocked. Waiting for the opening, Waisu charges at me. He's so fast. It's completely different from his usual elegant movements. He won't make it in... I, I, I won't make it in time. In an instant, Carol is standing by my side. He holds me close with one hand, as if to support me. He places his other hand on the, shoulder, on the sword I'm holding. You have no power left. But you were still resisting in your final moments. How vain. I see. So this is how it should have been. <laughs> Suddenly, my hand grows hot, and the sword erupts into bright flames. I can use my power. I can feel a different power welling up from inside me. No, it's coming from him. My instincts tell me what to do. I can borrow Carol's divine power do it. This is our only chance. Waisu hasn't realized yet. I grip the flaming sword and step forward. I thrust the sword straight out in front of me. Waisu creates a wall of wind, but the sword piece pierces through it, and a spear of flame pierces through his chest. The wind stops. Waisu is nowhere to be seen. Instead, a lone crane is lying on the ground. How... how did this happen? I don't know what he was thinking, but he's a pitiful man. Is he dead? Yeah, his soul's still on Earth. I'm going to send him to Hell so he won't be resurrected again. It'll be nice for him to spend some quality time in the sixfold Hell with Sama Yankur. Wait, are you going to be okay? My wounds aren't fatal. They'll heal soon. That's not it. You betrayed Sama Yankur and rebelled against them, didn't you? Aren't they going to want revenge? They're in the depths of hell, so they can't lay a finger on us directly. That's why they're working with a god who is trying to use their power. I suspected they were working with someone other than me, but didn't expect that it would be that proud Sagura Kamui. Honestly... I never thought he'd choose to be used by a human. Me too. I was sure he would be the last person to offer help to others. I wonder if he had a good reason. Now I can't even guess why. Well, now that Sororun Kamui is dead, you don't need to worry for the time being. Even if someone does attack you, you'll be able to deal with them for now. I'm worried about you. Carol suddenly smiles and turns his back to me. Then he picks up the dead crane. Anyway, go back to Kim and Kamui. K 
Carol, there's still so much I want to ask you. I want you to explain everything. You're coming back, right? That was a little far, but if you say so, I'll be back soon enough. With those parting words, Carol flies away with the body of the crane. We wait until dawn before heading back down the mountain. I ask Upachan to call for Purep. He hasn't finished treating his injuries, and he doesn't seem to know anything about Huaisu's actions. He can't hide his shock at the fact that Huaisu had betrayed us. We sit around the dining table at home. The atmosphere is solemn and quiet. Carol said he'd send Huaisu to hell. How, so how soon do you think he'll be back? The journey will probably take him a couple of days. I see. Hello, Otobe-san? It's Hollis. Do you know if the president has returned yet? Huh? He contacted you, saying he's taking another week off. I see. Thank you. Four days later, unable to wait any longer, I decide to visit Asashi again. It's not like the threat's over. Are you really going alone? Yes, I believe in Carol. I assume was a pain in the ass, but so was he. You're definitely going to have a hard time with him. Hey, Jolt. He sees me off with a wry smile. The weather is good and the fog is cleared. I travel as quickly as I'm able to the top of the mountain. There doesn't, to be, there doesn't seem to be any barrier around it. Foxes that blocked my path before are nowhere to be seen. It's quiet, but there's nothing strange about it. What can I do for you? A man dressed as a priest spoke to me. You're looking for our elder. He's not back yet. Leader, are you talking about Carol? The man nods. Are you the fox who gave me the sword? The man nods again. Oh, thank you for that. He hasn't been back since then? No. Perhaps seeing the concern, the concern for Carol written all over my face, the man continues. If the leader dies, he would be, we would be informed. He's safe. In that case, I wonder what he's doing. I don't know, but I do have some idea as to whether he might be going. As to, as to where he might be going. Would you like to know? Yes. Oh, November 16th, 1868. Flashback time. Mr. Enomoto. Sorry to have kept you waiting. The resistance of the Domain soldiers was harder than expected. Our army has finally entered Asashi. Mr. Enomoto. Why are you looking so down? Didn't you occupy Asashi without bloodshed? Kaimaru. Around 10 o'clock in the evening, unable to hold anchor. The power of steam was ineffective in the violent storm. It was blown near the shore and finally grounded into the shallows. The seafloor has many reefs, and we are unable, unable to set sail again. It was clear that Kayomaru would not be able to avoid sinking. At the time, a small portion of the hull was still visible above the waves. I could see it clearly from this small hill. Damn it! Damn it! Anamoto was frozen in place, speechless. Hijikata was smashing his fist into a pine tree over and over, weeping. I could clearly remember the contrasting attitude of the two. As if losing our light in the dark of the night, the Kayo Maru sank. He's not here. According to the fox, Carol often watches the ocean beneath these pine trees. Still, the more I think about it, the less I understand. That Siren up Kamui. I wonder why I'd fallen. I know, I know he likes humans. No matter how hard he tries, it doesn't seem that way. He likes humans, but he just doesn't know how to interact with them. That's why he's misunderstood.
Who's there? Bastard. How dare you show your face in front of me! Did you come here to be slain? As soon as he saw me enter the room, he put his hand on the hilt of his sword. He must hate me so much that he wants to kill me. He gave up and put his sword away, ignored me, and went back to his desk. Um, I think the, um, fell for him was more of a fell for his tricks. I don't think it was, like, fell in love. That's, at least, I mean, they, there was probably a better way they could have translated Upachan's words, but I think that's what it, they were probably going for. Don't you want to slay me? How did you even get in here in the first place? Great Kaku's been being defended by the Shogunate army, and we are completely encircled by the Imperial army. Must be some kind of monster. There's no point in trying to kill something that cannot be killed. Strong resentment towards me is conveyed from every word. However, he went to his desk as if it wasn't time for that right now. No, he probably doesn't have the energy left. His haggard face looks like it's a different person from half a year ago. Chikata died the day before yesterday. I know. Enomoto's face didn't change. He just sighed gently. The new government army had already defeated Hakodate, and the shogunate army led by Enomoto continued its last resistance at Goryokaku. Chikata headed to the city to recapture Hakodate. He was hit by a bullet when he passed the Ipangi Kamon gate. Enomoto's eyes were filled with determination as he gripped a writing brush tightly. Takiyake. Surrender. Just like Hijikata, I will remain lo a loyal retainer of the Shogunate until the end. The plan to develop this land as an independent country and prepare for the threat that is coming hasn't changed. But I will. I wish I had acted sooner. There's another way of life. I don't know if I should be saying this. You're not supposed to die in a place like this. You're right. The only reason my army was forced into this predicament was that you took the ship that was the cornerstone of our forces from us. Still, I don't care if I die and fade forgotten into the pages of history, but not this book. This Bankoku Kairitsu Zensho is what Japan needs going forward. Since I'm leaving this country in the hands of the new government, I've been writing a letter to Mr. Kuroda, requesting that he make use of this book. Still, I want you to live. Be sure to deliver that book and letter. Enomoto, who was prepared to die, fearing that the Bankoku Kair Kairitsu Zensho, which he had always treasured, would be lost in the war, sent it to the enemy general, Kiyotaka Kuroda, Surrender brought the era of samurai of the samurai to an end. The age changed to the Meiji period, and Japan began to walk the path to modernization. It's not here either. I spot someone sitting on the bank and approach. He is staring into space. I hesitate for a moment, wondering if I should talk to him and steal myself and call out to him. Can I sit next to you? He seemed genuinely surprised as if he hadn't noticed me. Very unusual for him. Yeah, of course. Sorry, I was going to come see you after I had collected my thoughts. wonder if you had some kind of mysterious power. I think you'd find me all the way out here. Before I can sit, he stands takes my hand, and starts walking. He's quiet, but we walk along, chatting casually as if nothing had even happened the other day. However, abruptly, he begins talking about the Sixfold Hell. And the Sixfold Hell is deep, deep underground. Once you fall, you will never be able to return. There's nothing there, just darkness, nothing living, no seasons. When humans die, they go to Pachnomasir. They live there with their ancestors. Eventually, they will be born in the human world again. When a god dies, they return to Kamuimosir. Neither is the sixfold hell. 
The darkness a complete nothingness that lasts forever. Something more terrifying in my death. Rislin. He stops and turns to face me. He had been looking away since we started talking, and for the first time he looks me in the eyes. I killed you twice. I killed you and sent you to Kamui Moser to try and defy Samayan Kerr's plan. I couldn't stop letting a human fall into a hell scarier than that. Or I couldn't stomach letting a human fall into a hell scarier than death. I chose the cheap way out and decided your fate by myself. I could have chosen another path. I was wrong. Please forgive me. His usual smile is gone and there are no more words left to him. He looks at me unwaveringly, straight in the eyes. I forgive you. You did the wrong thing, even if you were thinking of my best interests. My fate isn't yours to decide. But you admitted your mistake and apologized to me, so I forgive you. Thank you, Rislin. 1908, Tokyo. When I met Onomoto again, nearly 40 years had passed since the Battle of Koryokaku. Realizing that he was about to die, I went to Tokyo. He surrendered a few days after our last meeting at Koryokaku and was imprisoned. Onomoto was to be sentenced to death as a traitor. However, because Kiyotaka Kuroda, who believed that his talent was necessary for the new government, made efforts to save his life, he was spared the death penalty. Sir, a man named Sasayama has come to visit you. Hey, it's been a while. Remember me, Takayaki? He got up from the floor and blinked, wide-eyed. Then he smiled wryly. Is that you, Mr. Sasayama? Now that takes me back. You haven't changed at all, surprisingly. So a monster doesn't age. On the other hand, Anamoto's hair was completely white, his face covered in wrinkles, and he remained quite calm. You got pretty old. I'm still young compared to you, correct? At the time, I was prepared to die. I wanted to follow Hijikata and bury my bones in that place. I didn't think I'd live this long. I've been hearing about you from afar. You're definitely one of the people who laid the foundation for a new era. Glad I didn't let you die back then. I thought you weren't interested in politics. I'm not interested in human nations or wars, but I've always been interested in your life. Oh yeah, Diary of Siberia was interesting. You read it? Ha <laughs> I thought you'd like it. So what did you come here for today? Did you come to inform me of my death? I'm here to apologize for the Kaio Maru. That shouldn't have been lost. I still think it was one of the greatest ships to set sail. More than anything, it was your soul. I'm sorry, Takiaki. Forgive me for what I've done. Local villagers were talking that it sank because of the Fox's curse. Or because it angered the local god, but I didn't believe it. Seeing as I've lived this long, it seems you didn't curse me. In fact, I was only able to survive because of Mr. Kuroda, of course. But I also think that some inhuman power might have protected me. Could it have been you? I always thought I would have lost that war, wouldn't have lost that war, if I hadn't lost the Kaio Maru. But after a long time, I realized that wasn't the case. We weren't able to win against the endless march into a new era to begin with. I'm sure you were wise enough to know that. I can't begin to describe how much I despised you. But now it's in the past. I'll forgive you. Thank you. I wronged you too. After all, I shot artillery towards the mountain where you lived. True. It is modest, but I will pray for happiness in your last moment and peace in your next life. 
As I stroll down the stone pavement, he slowly reaches out his hand. I came all the way to Hakodate. You're going to see the night view, right? Yeah. It's called a million dollar night view. The land between the two sides of the ocean is so beautiful, as if a jewelry box has been flipped open. Holding hands in front of such a stunning view makes my heart race, as if we were teenagers falling in love at first sight. But Carol and I are human and God. I don't know how to process this, relation this relationship in the moment. Listen, I love you. Why are you saying that all of a sudden? I had to tell you before I regretted it. There's a guy I used to love. A guy? But I only realized it after he died. Oh, but I like Takiyaki. Takiyaki? I hated Hijikata, though. Hijikata? Toshiso? Then Takiyaki means Takekemo Enemoto? Every time I come to visit this town, I think of him. Just before Takiyaki died, I went to apologize for the incident with the Kaio Maru. I wanted him to forgive me. I wanted to hear it from him before he died. But that's just because I wanted to make myself feel better. There's so much more I should have talked to him about. Humans only have one short life. I loved his talent. The way he lived. If only I'd realized it sooner. So I wanted to tell you. I love you. When he says love, it seems to be a form of general love. Perhaps it's a little different from the feelings I have for him. Um, thanks. I'm a little disappointed, but he really is a god. It's only natural that the concept of love is different. Even so, I'm happy that he decided to tell me his honest feelings. Hey, Carol, come to think of it, I need to offer you something to as thanks for protecting me. I suppose you do. What do you want? What do you think? Mm, he is a fox god. You're supposed to offer friend tofu or fried tofu at fox shrines, right? <laughs> Rizlin, come on. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. Could you tell me what you want? Think about it yourself. He said it himself, didn't he? A god wouldn't protect me with the crude offerings I could make. What should I do? Should I practice and make better ina? Or good alcohol? Not cheap booze. Expensive ones like Dom Perignon and Roma Romane Conti. No? I've heard that the most expensive treasures are pleasing to the gods. He always wears expensive looking clothes. An Armani suit? A Rolex watch? Expensive cologne? I'm unemployed right now, and I don't have any money, but I'll work hard to get, what you, get you what you want. As I rack my brain, he suddenly pulls me into his arms and lifts my chin. What if I told you I wanted you? We gaze into each other's eyes for what seems like a lifetime before he kisses me. It's not the light teasing kisses that we shared last time. I can feel his passion burning my lips as we kiss like we are making up for thousands of missed opportunities. What? wait His tongue crosses my lips as if tasting something delicious. He pulls my body close to his. Should I stop him? Should I punch him? <laughs> stop! Outside? In front of all these people? Are you saying it's okay if we're alone? That's fine by me. No, um, I... I'm happy to give you anything you want, but I at least want to be mentally prepared for it. Hey, shearing up Kamui. Stop teasing her. You know what a god likes? What a god can't get it... What a god can't get on his own? Your smile. Ah. I want you to smile beside me forever. Rizlin, that was a confession of love right now. No, perhaps more like a proposal. Huh? Really? Carol? He smiles suggestively and walks ahead without answering. 
This isn't fair. To me, just knowing that we'd always be together from now on makes me happier than anything I could have dreamed. I still don't know what's, what lies ahead in this strange relationship, but I think it's okay to learn that together, one step at a time. And it's on! <laughs> Credits! Yay! Okay, see, CVB10, that wasn't so bad. I mean, there was some kissing at the end, but it, we got some, look, we got some splashbacks to, to the Boshin War. We got, um, we got some good Hokkaido, um, myths and lore. It was good times! Actually, this is very interesting and charming, I think. No, a volcano is the volcano is in Mesherichik's route, and I'm not I'm not going to stream that. But that's that's it. Um, I really really enjoyed this. I'm glad I bought it, and I cannot wait for the next two routes to come out, um, and for the game to come out of the early access. I suspect. Okay, so get this. Remember when you were um. You got off the train and you were waiting for um, Carol at the station and he was in the the one restaurant or whatever and talking to a really beautiful woman. I'm gonna bet, I'm gonna bet that's some young Kerr. I'm pretty sure that is. And I don't know, I, and I suspect that Huaisu had fell, fall, like years, long time ago, fell in love with a human and then it, something happened and they couldn't be together and that's why he's very, um, against gods and humans being together because it always leads to uh, misfortune and death. At least that's what I think. But I guess we'll find out in the, no in the other routes. So yeah, if you guys like this, support the devs, go buy it. <laughs>